Alright, I am about to start my very first review of a vlog, in a vlog, and overall, this is my very first content related to my newest, my newest theme for the channel, cartoons. Now, some are, some are great, most are bad, bad, bad. <laughs> the horror. Yeah. So you're basically hearing the theme of my stuff. It's cartoons. Now, I mean, well, I like cartoons more than probably most people. I, I watch a lot of them, but, um, see, one thing that annoyed me is Nickelodeon is an awful cartoon creator. And I'm going to say that for real. Nickelodeon is awful at creating cartoons. Other, now at least, Cora's gone, and, yeah, so what I'm going to say is, I think, I think, I've are so what, so my history with Cora, oh, but this isn't even the main focus, I really, really need to get to that, but, first of all, I'll tell you my experience with Steven Universe, so, Steven Universe, actually, and this is a similar pattern that Gravity Falls and Korra had, and those are my three favorite shows I've ever seen in this decade. Um, but Steven Universe started under the radar for me. I was never thinking of it as a high cartoon, until slowly but surely it jumped up, and I love the show now. It is great. If anyone has not seen it, and are using this, um, video to infer, you might really like this. This episode was a WHAM episode! So, but yeah, but once around they had, um, honestly, unlike most people who Steven the Sword Fighter or Giant Woman caught their eyes, it was really after it came back, it jumped back. Coach Steven, best episode I've seen other than the, a few episodes. It is amazing! And, I will tell you, the song, and I'm going to admit it right now, Pearl is my favorite of the gems. Yeah. She's really cool. Anyway, so, getting into the episode. So, what we have with Steven Universe is a pr Well, so, we have the three gems adventuring around in a place, I don't know what the place is, it was just this field of flowers, and apparently Steven is allergic to flowers. Gasp! No. Well, he he probably is, though. I have an allergy to grass, so. But anyway, and, and they, um, so after that, Steven sneezes. <gasps> Go sneeze into your thing, says Pearl. I don't know what that thing is. I know it's your elbow. And then, so what happens from there is we have, um, so, um, Garnet, um, says, bless you, I think I remember that. And then, so they go to the warp pad. The warp pad in this show are really cool. I like teleportation as much as I like time travel, which I'll get on in a later video about how most shows mess it up. <laughs> anyway, so. And then, so with the warp pad, they go on the warp pad, and, and they enter like this, uh, they're in this beam, um, up, and then, and Steven, um, um, sneezes downward like this. I'm flying! And his head pokes outside of the warp pad, um, and he sees other warps. Now, just a bit of background on this show, um, only gems can use warp pads, and Pearl, Garnet, Steven, and Amethyst are the last of their kind. They u Steven used to be, um, kind of like Rose Quartz in it. Rose Quartz. That was his mom, and she died giving birth to him. So anyway, so the boogers on Steven freeze, and, and he sees those beams. So... Once he sees the beams, he goes in and is talking about, like, how he has seen them. And when he's going to sleep, no, not SpongeBob Sleep. SpongeBob Sleep is so annoying. I am picturing it in my head right now. But, um, but what's kind of cool about, um, well, what's interesting, 
what's interesting is, um, so he can't sleep. Steven's face is all red. He's so tired. Um, they, and then, so, um, so he waits at the door. Um, and with a water gun, because he's afraid something's going to go at him. So, and, and then Pearl comes and with, Steven, we have a special treat for you. You can guess that she gets squirted. No, you can't. Oh, no. No. Anyway, so once she gets squirted, a Amethyst eats all the cookies. It's one of those the details I just remember. Um, and they go on through the warp, a warp tour, which is a, about a huge callback um, to the previous episodes that were great. And I don't remember the episodes off, off the top of my head, but I know they were great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know there's one giant woman reference. And a little getting the crap past the radar in there. If you haven't learned, I use TV tropes terms a lot. And so what we get from there is we get, um, so Steven, um, is, once Steven finishes, once that part finishes, um, Steven's laying in his bed, um, and uh, this, this th robot thingy comes crashing through. Pew! the house, and it's got this thing that can repair warp pads. So when the war so the thing starts repairing the warp pads that were there, uh, was at the gem's place, and then it takes off right in it. It's a robot. Um, what I haven't mentioned, um, is that only gems can use, I might have already mentioned this, but, hey, this is one shot. No do-overs. Uh, and so, um, the thing can repair it, and only the gems can go on the war pad, so, yeah. So basically, um, Steam goes into there, um, into the warp with the ro robot, and turns out there's are, there is, like, tons of these robots. Probably 500, no. It's more like 20, but Amethyst thinks it's a million. Um, and, but, so what happens is... Um, so Steven, um, w the, they overwhelm him, practically, and Steven is flying out the warp into deep space, and yeah, so, however, I love a certain moment, like, the way Garnet comes up, so Garnet comes, saves Steven, um, and they go to the warp station. Now, those little robots... Very, um, oh, and Pearl and Amethyst are there, too. Those little robots are repairing the warp pad. So, with the warp pad's being repaired by those robots. Gasp! I don't know what's gonna, I didn't know what's gonna happen. And then this gem called, uh, then, so they have to hide, because, um, they're all so scared. Um, and Peridot comes out, uh, and that's the name of the new gem. Yes, there is a new gem. So this video has spoilers, which should have been said at the start. Um, she comes down and the gems hide through Garnet's fist, and and so she comes and she um she sees the sticker. Yes, Peridot seems like she's one of those really. She's a very, like, technology character, I f feel like. And she's definitely cooler than some characters I've seen on the show. But, but I feel, um, I'll tell you my thoughts later. Um, and so Peridot, um, Dot looks around and d doesn't see anybody. Well, so here's the way to get... So, um, she heads back, she, um, she sees the cracked robot, though, um, and she actually steps on it. Cruel. Yes, gems can even be robot killers. And what she does from there, she goes back into the warp, and, but, but she's seen the sticker, and she deactivates all her other robots. She's a murderer, so... No, a robot murder murderer. And so once she goes right back up, she um um Pearl, Amethyst, and Garnet get start getting freaking out. And and Garnet smashes the warp pad, smashes it in epic, epic fashion. 
smash! So, and once she smashes the war pad, things are about it. Um, you find that, and by the looks on Pearl and Amethyst's face, they are look very, very scared. This was a great, great episode. And then it cuts out after the Garnet face. So, my thoughts on the episode? I have one suspicion. Peridot is going to be a great villain. What? How do I know this? Peridot has already established Cruel. However, I feel like we might have a little bit more of a Death Note style situation. Or Peridot is, um can be a bit of a, it might be a hero, and it might be the gem, the gems might actually be, um, in my opinion, the gems could be, um, anti-heroes. Really, I feel like they might be criminals right there, other than Steven. And, and I feel like this is a great direction to turn. I mean, we have Adventure Time, which is another show I like, um, which, I don't feel like any of the major characters are are that bad. There's anti-villains, and uh, the closest thing they got to a bad guy is Marceline. No, not the bad guy. I meant anti-heroine. Heroine. It's not the drug. And, uh, so yeah, that's the, basically the episode. I loved this episode. On my first viewing, I was not a huge fan of the beginning part, but on my second viewing, it was really, really good. The show, um, Steven Universe, I'll have to mention, it has the best background music I've ever heard in a show. I feel like it's, um, it's just amazing to listen to. Each character has their own theme, and that's usually in shows, but not in comedy shows like Spongebob, because they don't care to put them in. Yeah. So, it was a great episode. See, I like... See, I feel like with most shows, the comedy-centered episodes, oh, and I mean Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by this, the, like, a Monster of the Week episodes are awful. I can't even, I can't even exaggerate my distaste for season three of TMNT. Um, and what, well, Steven Universe gets the format right. Alongside Gravity Falls, which I think Steven Universe is closer to Gravity Falls than Adventure Time. Adventure Time is more epic, while Steven Universe, like Gravity Falls, has a lot of character interactions. So, this was my thoughts on Steven Universe's Warp Tour. Great episode, and if you are a fan of this show, this is a must-see. It is in the main plot. It's not, it's not like, it's not like some of them, I feel like the line episodes and this, the Ocean Gem ones, I feel, anyone with, um, Mega Evolution, no, I don't mean Mega Evolution, I mean Fu Gem Fusion, um, and just, those ones establish plots, and those are, con those are what I consider the story arc. And what's cool is this also brought in many other episodes into the arc, like, you could, um, but I don't remember their names. <gasps> Steven the Swordfighter is also into the arc. I'll get more on the, that later. So, thanks for spending almost 15 minutes of your time watching me r ramble about this in no formal fashion. So, thank you for watching. See you next Friday. No, probably today, because I'm going to also do an Adventure Time episode review. Okay, I'm in the same clothing, and at the same location. This is because I am taking out many of these Cartoon Lifespan videos right now. Well, at least Gravity Falls and this one, Steven Universe. Um, for Steven Universe, the Cartoon Lifespan, based on Cartoon Network practices with action shows I think I most will get a third season I know I know but here's the thing about comparing Steven Universe to to anything else on Cartoon Network's lineup is comparing a thriller movie to a kid a little kid's movie wanna why Steven Universe Okay, that's not a good metaphor for it. I'll get it. I get it. I mean, <laughs> um, 
But Steven Universe really, really is unique. Not something Cartoon Network has. I mean, Steven Universe, the comedy is still there. But I really think, and I'm going to say Adventure Time is a comedy based on this. Steven Universe delves further into the characters, into the plots, and slowly but surely introduces it. In fact, they know how to do, how to send out a set of episodes without, um, without a lot of filler. Um, because, like, the recent slur that have happened. Um, we got, let's see, um, Warp Tour, Packed to the Brim, um, and then Alone Together, which was another no no filler episode. The test. I don't even call it filler because it's got some really good development between Steven and the Gems. And it really shows some of the relationships they have. So that's why I really um think it's unique. It's nothing Cartoon Network does. Adventure Time is um because I'm comparing it to Adventure Time the most because that that's its closest brother on the channel. In fact, I'd say, though, the close, its closest brother, and I said it in my Gravity Falls video, is Gravity Falls. I just get that feeling because, well, both aren't cart comedies, per se, you know? Um, but, yeah, at most it will get a third season due to the network's practices, which is a bummer. I think there's, I think Cartoon Network, um, should give it more than a third season, and if not, I hate it when a network like Cartoon Network cancels a show before its prime is over. Um, Young Justice, I didn't see it, but I know the I know about it on TV Tropes, and I feel like plenty of shows fall into the category. Cartoon Network, I think, will either cut a good show too short, um keep it at a normal run length and make it perfect or um adventure time it i know i know i love adventure time as well it's my second favorite cartoon network show of all time and yet i think it it could have ended by now if you had just gotten to the story and had less filler episodes I feel like if they did the, what the same thing they did with Steven Universe, where they got had many, many serious episodes from the beginning of the series, Adventure Time would be much higher up on my uh, on my favorites. Um, another thing I'll compare it it to is The Legend of Korra, filler wise. This is, what's funny you'll see about my cartoon timeline videos is I'll usually tackle another topic during the timeline. What, um, like for the Gravity Falls one I did, um, being mistreated by the network. This one, and filler, and I'll also do with filler with this one. See, here's the thing, I hate filler episodes. I really don't like them much. But I like them in, when they're done right, like in Gravity Falls and Steven Universe. Adventure Time, I've started to start thinking that it does not know how to do filler episodes right. Many, many shows don't do filler episodes right, and that's the ones that have serious arcs. If you are to build up a serious arc, you need to keep this arc going. Otherwise, otherwise it will lead to arc pagitude. Um, I might not pronounce it right. right. Um... But really, once it um once it goes into arc pagitude, it, it it's it's hard. TMT did arc pagitude wrongly. It's okay to space out an arc, and I'm fine with that. So yeah, this is my cartoon timeline for Steven Universe video. Holy cow! I just saw my favorite episode of Steven Universe right there, on the run. Uh, it used to be Coach Steven, now it is on the run. This is the one episode that shows, in my opinion, Steven Universe is superior to Adventure Time. Steven Universe is superior to anything Cartoon Network has 
pulled out. Why? The plot. This was just the best episode of the best show Cartoon Network's been airing lately. I, um, was really disappointed because I was trying to watch, <gasps> give Teen Titans Go another shot and it failed. Um, and then so I watched this, the best episode of it, sh it and it shows on the run. Mr. Enter, if you are watching this, do an admirable animation because this is special. So it starts off with, with Steven reading the Boxcar Children series. And, um, and so, um, Pearl, Garnet, and Amethyst come back with the little robots from Warp Tour, the other episode I've done a vlog on. And, and so Amethyst destroys one of the little thi robots. And, and, well, so, and we finally get a little more backstory, which I think is bluffing, because I don't like Pearl and Garnet as much, and I, I mean, wow. So basically, that, those robots were from the home world, trying to p patch it up, and so, um, and so, Amethyst, so they tell him the story, Amethyst, However, pull the look on her face. If you, um, I was commenting on a video with a few other channels, um, and, wow. It proved me correctly, I think. I think that, um, um, I think there's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those no clear right or wrong. I mean, it's already done that after Life is Lazuli. So, Okay, to the next part of it. Um, so, Steve and, Anna, and the Am Amethyst go on the run, and they go to Amethyst's home. Um, and it's thought to be space until now. So, um, and it's this place called Kindergarten. Um, Kindergarten is, is kind of like this place, and it seems... <sighs> For me, I used to watch Ninjago. And it reminds me of this, the twist that they had. Um, Amethyst is an artificial gem. She didn't come from space like the others. And that... And I think Amethyst is, like, mass-produced. So after they get Amethyst and convince her, um, after Pearl comes, and such and such like that, and so they talk... This has been a very, very quick video, so I'm going to add on theories and stuff. So this is, I, like, literally finished watching that episode. I literally just finished it before I made this video. I didn't do any script. I went completely unscripted. It was that good. So, what is my, my theory? So, and... This is the direction the show's coming. So, all three of the other, um, gems, um, Rose, Pearl, and Aunt Garnet, all came from space. So they knew about the gem world. What, what's interesting to me, they probably told Amethyst about it. They must have, they must have found a way to convince her to join their side if she was created to be bad. I just can't stop gushing over this episode. It is... If you ever want a reason to get into Steam Universe, this episode shows everything. Oh, I forgot they had a song! Um, the song was really, really good. Like every song from this show, I mean, all three of the gem... No, all four of the gems have good singing voices, and... It was one of the reasons why Coach Steven was so special for me. I did... It's just very, very impressive. I would watch this episode to get into the show. Well, maybe. But, um, but here's the thing. What I like about this show, it's always, it always has had, even its filler episodes go directly along with a myth arc. Unlike, um, shows like Adventure Time, which some episodes you can skip completely, this show, you can walk, you can see, you must see all the episodes. I think it's an episode, like, filler, and it reminds me of Gravity Falls in that aspect. Like, each episode has some development for characters. Just, no, just, wow. 
for this episode, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. It was that good. Anyway, so, I want to do a live stream um, sometime soon here on this episode. Either, like, tomorrow or something. If anyone is a fan of this show, who's a major YouTuber, um, or something, please, um... Please, I'll drop my email in the description. Please email me, and I'll check to see if I can get some pe more people to join. You know, it was just that good for an episode. Okay. Anyway, thank you. And it'll soon be Adventure Time time. Yeah. Well, that was a good episode. I just finished watching Steven Universe's Beach City Horror Club, which. Proves I am personally against filler episodes, and I sometimes hate them. However, I'm honestly not even a big fan of Adventure Time's filler episodes. I want a good story to go with my cartoons, but there is one cartoon that has filler down pat. It's Steven Universe. Steven Universe and Gravity Falls, which is going to be another show I'm going to start picking up doing reviews for, um, are very, very similar. Like, both shows know how to do filler right. Um, filler, um, is more about, um, see, filler is a break from the plot. Filler, um, filler, though, is not an excuse for just a comedic episode. If you do that, that's bad filler. Steven Universe understands something that most cartoons do not. They understand how to put some real character development into it. For this episode, what I like is, so, what's interesting is we knew that Steven had a growing friendship with Ronaldo and Lars and Sadie. Both haven't subplot, both haven't um, really met yet, and we finally get to see some great reactions in this episode. I'll t definitely tell you that I love this episode. It's not as it's not as strong as uh, on the run, but it's that. But on filler side, I'd say it's my favorite filler episode, other than Coach Steven. Um, what it? So let's talk about the plot. So Steven's um outside the big donut with um, and then so Lars and Sadie come out. And so we find out that Lars doesn't really like Ronaldo and thinks he's a little weird. Personally, Ronaldo, up until this point, has not been a character I truly liked. He was a moderate character, but other than that, I um, don't like him. But, you know, I just found a growing fondness for the character after this episode. You wanna know why? Um, He's not overly geeky. Uh, well, no, he's overly geeky, but he represents geek culture pretty much. Even the message or, or part was hilarious for me. Um, so anyway, so they go to the um, lighthouse and watch pro presumably like this teddy bear movie. Um, and so from that point, they um, they rather they enjoy. Um, Stephen's hiding for that. Then. The power goes out, and all of a sudden, the episode takes a good, darker turn. One thing I like about any Cartoon Network show, it, and Gravity Falls is also a part of this, um, and Korra also falls under this. They're not afraid to go into that dark territory. Nickelodeon shows, Spongebob, Sunday and Craig, Breadwinners, etc. Those shows, oh, and Phineas and Ferb is included with that, but despite admi liking that show. Um, they are, are Nickelodeon and those in certain Disney cartoons, um, there's a barrier. They will not, they will not cross that barrier. Um, and it's because those ones are mainly for little kids uh, compared to these shows. Like, Adventure Time is for tweens and early teens. I mean, I'm an early teen and I watch Adventure Time. And Steven Universe, I do not have a huge fondness for regular show, though. I even like Clarence. Um, but, so, as we continue, so they're going downstairs, and these, like, um, 
ghost, um, we possess creatures, Vargin, and Steven holds his own, which I like. I mean, at the start of the series, Steven was not really, really able to hold his own. Um, but Finn was, which is one thing I like about Steven much better than Finn. Steven has evolved into that character who can hold his own. Um, and that's something that I, um, admire about this show. Um, and, yeah, um, so, and they go, go down, and Sadie gets sucked in to this thing. I'll get to the minor details. And so, um, Steven, um, so they rescue Sadie. Steven holds his own again, which I like is, he wasn't, he, let me just say, he was not the main focus of this. It was the relationship between Ronaldo and Lars. Um, and so, um, once Steven holds his own, um, and fights off against it, he finds a gem. The gem projects a hologram of Lars and Ronaldo. We're good friends. You know, I admire this. I'm going to say that Lars is a geekish type, I think, too. Um, he's not part of the cool kids, which makes me seem, huh, he's got to be a little unique. I mean, he's definitely quirky in some ways. Um, and so, let me just think. Yeah, so, um, it shows that Ronaldo and Lars used to be great friends, it seems. It was so cute, the little flashback. Um, and so, um... Um, and so, after that, um, Ronaldo and Lars, um, so, Ronaldo captured an embarrassing photo of Lars, and Lars ripped it up, which ended pretty much their friendship. The gem was pretty impressive to watch show that, and the music in the background, oh my goodness, I could gush over that music for hours. I love every single bit of audio in Steven Universe. The voice acting is great. The songs are amazing. And, um, and the background music is amazing as well. It's, it's even something I had to listen to on my own. So, yeah, um, another thing I'll point out is I love how they do this. Like, Sadie and Lars are obviously a couple, in my opinion, and... I think of things a lot like Steven sometimes, so, they're a lot like a little married couple. And so, um, and so after the, that, um, so Ronaldo seems to be developing a crush on Sadie, which is pretty admirable, too, because Ronaldo and Lars are a lot alike. They're both some of the older males that Steven knows in life, in the city, um, both are very geekish in their own ways. Ronaldo's more of the YouTube geek type, and um, Lars is more of that, you know, that kid who, um, he's not really athletic. He, um, he just is, he seems a little bit like um, one of those geeks. He might play a small sport. Um, I'm a mixture of both of those in my geeky type. Like, I play tennis. Um, but, um, but I'm a lot like Ronaldo. I mean, you see me on YouTube. I, I don't just, I can't even believe how strong this show is. Especially since, um, since what I hate about how Cartoon Network does this is they air Teen Titans Go before the new episode, a repeat of it. It makes them seem like kids really want Teen Titans Go. They don't want a show like Steven Universe that has in-depth characters and um, a powerful, powerful message at times. They would rather have non-stop comedy and no quality. Yeah. But I'll tell you, that's my review for this week. Um, I will... I'll do my best to get a video out next week, but I cannot promise you that, that I'll do an, ep an episode review at immediately next week. I might be waiting a little bit, but hey, this one was immediate. Um, on the run was immediate. So, well, see you later, guys, and have a great day. Oh, I have to mention something. So, two things. I am get I guest starred um, 
last week on U.S. and Friends, and I'll probably become, I might become a regular in that, that, it's amazing, it's a group of kids, um, that just, or teens that gather and enjoy it. We, we talk and we do cover things from Gravity Falls to Gary's Mod. Uh, um, so yeah, well, that'll be the news for this week, I'll be in New York next week. And I might have some footage of what I found and saw. So, that's it for this week. For the f f for a uh, final time, the Lord is asking for my Steven Universe Winter Forecast Review. And theory, alright? When I first watched this episode, I didn't think it was anything special at all. Until I watched it through this time. I've got a huge breakthrough I'm ready to take on. The Warp Tour is already gone. Here's the thing. So, in this episode, um, first with the episode review, then my Warp Tour is gone. Work. Um, alright, so it starts off, uh, Steve and Connie roast in marshmallows. It's pretty good, um, and so the a winter storm is coming. Connie has to get home, and then Garnet kisses Stephen on the forehead. We progress through the story, um, and then um, and then they stall. Um, uh, they stall Greg with new um, coats or new sweaters and stuff for him to put on. This ends up in a bad um, future where um, so they go and they get stuck in the snow, so they have to walk to Connie's house. Waiting for Connie's parents to be mad, and Connie to get sick. Um, so, in the next, then, Stephen looks at Greg's uh, coat, and time, and pretty much travels back. It travels back to when they were stuck, and they start toast, and they start making marshmallows and stay in the van. Connie's dad starts driving in the snow and going um going to um going to the van um cuz they need Connie home um in that um future um he gets in a car accident supposedly killing him and the uh, and out maybe someone out of, out of the other I think but he's probably definitely dead in that future um the next thing that happens is they go back to the car, and then Steven and Connie go back, um, back to the Gems house, and so in that future, um, they get, um, the mom objects, and, and so they're going there. However, this is where my theory will come into play. Garnet, Pearl, and Amethyst are, um, are trying to transport, like, the, a gem version of a bomb, to the warp, to the warp place. Um, they send it. They um, fail to send it, and presumably everyone dies in that in that um, future too. Leading um, to what originally I thought was a cop out a bit. It was just Garnet's future vision. However, that's genius. I here's the thing. I do not love this episode, but I do like it. A lot. It's it's up there in the good in the good episodes, um, for me. But so here's what'll happen now. Well, for me, I'm about to talk about two things. First of all, if Steven experienced all the futures he had, I feel awful for Garnet. Cause that means Garnet will have experienced all of the futures she sees too. So, futures where her loved ones can die, Garnet would be a victim of it. Um, and have to feel that. So, now for my thing. The Warp Tour is gone. So, basically, the Warp Tour, um, in fu Bad Future number three, they were going to blow up the Warp Tour. But here's the thing. When the real thing happened, once they left, we didn't see the gems. So, but so they probably were still sending it up to the warp tour place. Um, 
which means the warp tour place, if they succeeded, is obliterated. Um, so yeah. So, thanks for, thanks for sticking around for that episode review. What up, guys, and it's time to t give my notes that I had on Steven Universe's Marvel Madness. Now, so the episode starts with the gems having a robot come to the ground, and they defeat the robot, and, and after they defeat the robot, they, um, go back, back in, and repeat, repeat. Um, the next part that happens, so they just ha another one comes, it seems like they've had to battle five in a week, and another one comes, and they ride it. So they ride it to Kinger Garden, and they ride it from the Island Adventure Place, and then, um, so once they do that, um, they go downstairs into ki into the deeper part of Kindergarten. Now, Kindergarten intrigues me and stuff how dark it is, especially in Cartoon Network's goofy atmosphere. Now, so, what we have from there is, we actually, so they go down, um, Steven, uh, the only real flaw in the episode is Steven revealing himself to, um, to Pure Dot when, cause Pure Dot's here, um, cause she uses one of those robots and gets, um, one of those, she finds out that Steven's here in some witty dialogue, um, and then so, we have a confrontation between, um, see, we've had two confrontations, but this one, and I think is my favorite out of the two, um, the gems battle against Pure Dot's hands, master hand style. And so Pure Dot, um, finally realizes that they were the heir, and realizes that they did all that stuff. She told them other members of her group, we find that out. However, in this episode, another thing I'd like to talk about, unlike a dumb reviewer named Velsky Bum for Gravity Falls, um, I would like to tell you that I have a different, I have another theory to add to this. The Warp Tour, after this episode, is without a question, gone. And here's my explanation. So Pure Dot, um, couldn't send it through the warp thing. If she wanted direct destruction on Earth, or even a check, she might have known where the gem's warp is due to the warp, um, system. So why would she f send it flying to Earth? Flying hits the Earth. And, overall, the episode was really great, and it helped as a great addition to the space arc. Well, it did have a flaw, um, in storytelling, but... It was an amazing episode. It was deeper than most episodes. And so that's me signing out on Steven Universe's Marvel Madness. Hello, and it's time for the review of Story for Steven. Okay, first of all, let's get my notes down. Um, Greg's an amazing singing voice, only second to Garnet. Um, it is rather funny that, like, the first part was really had a lot of good jokes. Um, Marty's a jerk. Everyone should know that. The other gems looked smaller, I thought. Um, and, you know, the show is amazing. Now, for another note before I get to the plot. Um, Pearl is romantic for Rose. Yes, Cor I mean, Pearl does have feelings for Rose, and this episode confirms it. When she says, I can sing... She definitely ha wants to impress Rose in some way. So, I think Rose's scabbard started it off, and then this elaborated on it more, and, you know, Pearl does have romantic feelings for Rose. It's a fact now, for my, in my opinion, at least. Um, the next thing I'll... So, yeah, the episode was all about Greg and Rose's backstory, which was adorable. Um, I love... Greg was so, Greg was amazing in that, and I just like the episode in general. I don't want to make it so fast, but I enjoyed this. It was great. Um, it was definitely not the best that goes to the Jailbreak Return, which I will get to in the future. So, um, I thought it was funny Amethyst as a bird. That was pretty well. Um, Pearl was good in it, too. Um, I enjoyed it all. And that's all I can really say. There's nothing much I can say other than that it was heartwarming, the backstory. Well, see you later, guys. Bye! So, I just watched the new episode of Steven Universe Reformed.
it is one of the best episodes of the show, and I will tell you exactly why this. With an amazing episode like Reform, it allows us to see more things than just the characters. It's a very emotional episode. It, um, it's all about um, being who you want to be and stuff like that. The case is with Amethyst, and it is fascinating. And this is probably what I'll call Season 2's Steven the Sword Fighter in a way. Because the both handle regeneration very well. And have a gem coming back in a different form. So, there's this beast going through the gem temple, right? Called the Slinker. The Slinker is an interesting beast, and so Amethyst is slinked by him. And just like in the Steven the Sword Fighter, only her gem remains. Steven is wicked sad at this. And this shows in the show's power. Unlike most shows, Adventure Time included in this. Um, with Adventure Time, I can't feel for the characters that much. Not many of them, in my opinion, are relatable. The universe, on the other hand, has four relatable main characters. That in it is an immense amount of characters like that, especially for a kid's TV show. But Amethyst's new costume is rather interesting. And I um, I enjoy it. It's a good change. It was an amazing episode. However, this episode, I feel, hits on a more emotional standpoint. It talks a little more in-depth about re regeneration and stuff like that. This episode, in my opinion, has my respect Everybody for that. Everybody told me gem stuff's dangerous. I guess I didn't You're believe it until now. I that always you seemed apprehensive. That Every and now he's really freaking out. What do I do? Unlike Adventure Time. I don't want that for you. I am a huge Adventure Time fan as well, and I even have a fin hat to show for it. Um, but I am more of a Steven Universe fan because of the emotional city. It's emotional. Everybody level tells that me life is precious very well on the planet Earth. And that the means first you, step what I have to protect you. Really showcase what if somehow you emotion. get hurt? What do now, I do? I is don't amazing, want that and for it's you. just as good as the first season. Ooh. Just this episode was the most touching moment in my life. That Ooh. I am about to grade. I would what am I going to tell you? Steven Universe You're better reform. off not knowing the trouble I'm in. I don't want you to worry. Nine out of ten. About what that's I've just seen, about good. where I've just been. You don't have to be a and part that's of this. I don't think I want you to be. Are, don't they, need every this. episode, in my opinion, has gotten at you least don't seven. Need me. Thank you for watching my video. And if you liked the episode too, comment, subscribe, and like it. I will be putting out past videos eventually and stuff. So help support me and help support the show. The Roblox Ruler slash Entertainment Lord is out. I may have to say it before that Pearl is my favorite out of the gem. And she's yet the one that I have yet to know the most about. Sworn to the Sword is an amazing episode for its dy dynamics between Pearl and Connie. So, when Connie wants to be trained in the sword, Pearl trains her as a knight. And, the song in this episode is one of the things that stands out the most. It is phenomenal. Not stronger than you, but it's one of the top five songs of the series. And Connie proves that she can sing as well. So, what else do I have to say about Sworn to the Sword? It is, um, another octave into Pearl's crush on Rose that we've been learning about frequently lately. And, you know, I like it. I really, really like this episode and hope many did. Um, let's see. The episode's sword fight, though, was pretty darn good. It, and we really get to see how Pearl's not insane, but she definitely has a different style of thinking than any of the other characters. Her devotion to Rose is the main part of this episode. The description isn't exactly the most accurate, because this is mainly about Pearl and Connie, not just really like Connie training Pearl. 
So that's why I say that Torn of the Sword is a good episode of Steven Universe. And I'll hopefully get more on it soon. Uh, oh, so, oh, they have to do the theme song as well. And here's the thing. It is awesome, or than it was. They updated everything from the end part. They ed edited how everything goes about. I feel, though, and I'll probably do a whole separate review on this, I feel that they should turn the theme song into a more of a dynamic theme song and more of an actual song than what it is. But thank you for watching this Steven Universe Born to the Sword vlog. Besides Falling Skies might have just been one of the most interesting episodes I've seen yet. I did like the episode, but did I love it? No. First of all, this episode picked the painful viewpoint, like the really painful part of it, of R Ronaldo, which I, as much as I do like Ronaldo, he's easily on the lesser half of the characters. Um, this was another, though, one of those say uncle kinds of episodes, and for it, it was a very good one. So, one scene, just to tell you how funny it is. So, um, Ronaldo was, like, filming this documentary this entire time. And so he's recording Onion. This is him. Onion, do you have anything to say? And what are your thoughts on who saved Beach City? And then Onion's, like, wax the microphone out of his hand. Oh, that was good. Like... So this episode did have, it would easily be on the lowest rank of the lower er, half of the episodes. But was it good? Yes, it was. I liked this episode as much as I liked the other, many others. So, yeah. Um, let's see what else I should say here about it. Um, Garnet is hysterical in this one. So, if you like the really, really serious side of Steven Universe, you're not going to get much out of this episode. But if you like the comedic side of Steven Universe, and you are a fan of Stan, well, you'll get a kick out of this. This is probably a 7 out of 10. That episode was interesting. Keeping it together was one of Steven Universe's most mixed episodes, in my opinion. I liked it. Yet I wasn't a huge fan, like I thought I would be. Yeah, this episode, I think, was disappointing. So the gym finally returned to kinder kindergarten, and, hey, it's good. The return, based on how Marble Madness had come, the order, better than Adventure Time, which I will talk about in a later video, hopefully. But, in all, this episode was decent. I wouldn't say one of the series best, but that's saying something for me. You learn a lot more about Fusion as an individual and stuff through Garnet in this episode, and if you're a few, and uh, sadly though, you never even get to see Ruby and Sapphire like you would hope you would. In fact, it's kind of disappointing in my opinion, because fans are dying to see these characters, really. Dying to see these characters. So, how do I think it did? From a storytelling standpoint, this is a good episode and stuff. From a writing standpoint, it's a good episode. It's a good episode. I will not deny that. I just, I liked it, but nor did I dis, nor did I love it. So, how I would say, oh, pure dot. Paradox back, and it's kind of disappointing again. Yeah, this episode really, really was disappointing. I thought this was going to be the um, the message of this week's episodes, but nope. Sorry, got to tell you, got to tell you, I'm oh, sorry, but it is a good episode. I'll give it that. Thank you for watching my review slash vlog of Keeping It Together. Here from the watching corner, which is where I 
occasionally will do reviews. But anyway, so the subject of this is we need to talk the vlog. We need to talk how this episode was decent. I liked it. I really did. But Steven Universe is not going through seasonal rot. I'm just gonna say that with its re with its recent three episodes are sub usual quality, I think. No. Can I really be happening? Do I love a show? Can it? Father. No. Um, anyway. So, the episode talks a lot about fusion, and we get to see Stevani again. And we get to see Rainbow Courts. The character we'll never see again, uh, aside from flashbacks. Yep, that's how it works. <laughs> anyway. So, I I enjoyed this episode. It was good. Not great. Good. Even by normal show standards. As much as I praised Story for Steven, I did like this episode, but Pearl felt... I have to talk about this now. I am... I actually... Am a shipper of Pearl and Rose right now. Okay? I'm not a Rose and Greg shipper. Yet, I don't like seeing that much Rose and Pearl stuff. And this is the show. This is a flaw in the show that I'm going to say. They've been giving Pearl and Rose's relationship more and more screen time. And they've made it very... Very clear that Pearl has a crush on Rose. I don't know why, but I think this is a one-way ticket to Coralville. You know what that is? Well, being pushed online. Yep. So anyway, aside from that though, this episode was good. The flashbacks were fun. Stevani was fun. Pearl and Rose got in the way. Pearl and Rose's relationship got in the way of this. I really liked Garnet in this episode. So yeah. TV vlog for... Crying for help. Yep, got it this time. So. How was this episode? Good. It really was good. I really liked Sardonyx. I like that they ended up putting Sugalite. I doubt Sugalite will ever speak unless Nicki Minaj wants to do it again. Um, but, so, as you can tell from my videos that I've had, I am a song person. This is probably one of the weakest songs in the series, yet it's still good. Amethyst sings, and it proves that despite not having the greatest voice it, uh, originally, it's really improving. Voice actress of Amethyst, keep up your work. So, what else should I say? Um, so, if you haven't been made aware of this already, before this episode, Pearl was my favorite gem. Yes, I... One of my biggest problems with this episode was how selfish Pearl was. I can get that feeling and stuff, but she didn't have to go that far with it. Let's see, what else? Um, Steven was adorable as ever in this episode, and and I really, really like Sardonyx the best out of all three of the fusion, aside from Garnet that we've seen so far, of the main three gems. The, the personality, and it's Garnet's strength with Pearl's, um, with Pearl's carefulness. However, I can see that really feeling bad for Amethyst, who doesn't have either of those qualities alone. But so, thanks for watching this TV vlog. Sorry for making it so quick, but... Skedaddle! Ruby and Sapphire have returned. And this is phenomenal. 
He still won't tell may just be one of my favorite episodes since Sworn of the Sword. It highlights both Sapphire, who seems to have icy powers, and Ruby, who seems to have flame powers. It highlights their relationship and what parts of Garnet they make up. Um, why Garnet has only three eyes and why people really didn't expect it to be confirmed is because Sapphire only has one eye. And boy, so, and Ruby has the weapon, Sapphire is the future vision. We do not know if Sapphire is a weapon, weapon yet, and that'll be interesting. Kiso Motel may just be my favorite episode of the show. Except for Sworn for the Sword, Rose Scabbard, Gilbreak, etc. <laughs> um, but, it, so, here's the plot. Bring Stephen, Greg, and Garnet along the ride to Keystone Motel, which is a motel. Greg advertises like crazy. P Garnet and Pearl still have had their fallout. And they make it to the motel, where Garnet is arguing over forgiveness and not. It, and eventually, <sighs> Garnet splits. So, what's so great about this episode in that aspect is, well, it it's really, really good at explaining both characters. Ruby is very emotional and works emotionally, while Sapphire works more, more w with just forgiveness and stuff and doesn't seem to have much emotions. But in the end, they both love each other. So, Greg goes off to meet this guy he met on the internet. Hey, reminds me of how I met some of my internet friends. And, yeah, this episode was really good. One of the best episodes of the show. So, and so once that happens, Ruby goes to the pool, Sapphire stays inside. Steam first visits Ruby, and um, Ruby melts the pool. Like, evaporates it. So, yeah. Thanks for watching this review. <laughs> I've been getting ahead of myself five million times now. Um, so, so after that, Stephen goes inside and Sapphire freezes the room pretty much. The toilet even freezes. Yep. Um, Greg gets home. They have pizza. Um, they go to the best diner in the world. They freak out. Stephen goes out and says everything is awful. There's Sapphire and Ruby fuse again. This was awesome. Thank you for watching. Show has a dud. Trust me, Gravity Falls will get one. Steven Universe has had its dud. Onion Friend. It's not your idea like this episode. It's. I kind of did. Um, it was moderately funny, yeah. But aside from that, the creepy stuff that Onion does did I thought was taken a little over the top. Um, I did like the episode. I didn't really like the episode, but it wasn't bad. It was more of a meh. Uh, and it really shows. It really does. Um, see, so the plot starts at the temple. And it's the return of Vidal Vidalia, which many could like. The episode falls on its face when it comes to Onion, whose creepiness is uncanny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't like this episode. So, it's a great show in general, don't get me wrong. And I mean, it did have some, it did have its fair share of funny moments, but I betcha this episode's gonna fly by and be gone soon. So, sorry for making it quick, but I really don't have much to say here. Thank you for watching. This is the Steven Universe vlog of historical friction. An episode that was so much better than our new friend. At least. See, I'll tell you, I really like Jamie. After this episode, at least. Um, I'm a theater nut myself. I've played Winthrop in the Music Man and um, a, a Young Kangaroo 
in Susical, so. And so, Jamie is very, very likable. He's, he's actually quite a bit like myself, like, very optimistic and passionate about what he's doing. And, Historical Friction, I would probably say, is my second favorite episode of the week so far, only behind Keystone Motel. I liked it better than Cry for Help and on Onion Friend. But what hits about this episode so much is it really, really helps Hope Fun add a bit of executive meddling and explains how to create a character properly. Yes, and I think the show might have been tuning its own, own horn because of all their amazing characters, but um, when they, when when Jamie said that um, every character needs a flaw, I was completely with him and stuff. Any writing person is. Jamie may just be one of the best examples of referencing it and stuff. He's pretty darn good at that. So this is a Pearl only episode, but we did get to see some cosplay ideas. Slash bad ones. Pearl, so how does this go? Um, when I'm passionate about an episode, I'll tell you, I'll probably go over its plot. And so the basic premise of historical friction is so Jamie recruits Steven to do play, and the play is written by Mayor Dewey, whose hamminess is amazing. I don't like him that much, but he's pretty darn I like him. Um so after that with Mayor Dewey and stuff, so um Steven upset at its low circle accuracy and failure on writing techniques. And now Mayor Dewey, because the main character is William Dewey the mayor's great grandfather, I think, or no, Buck's great grandfather, and Mayor Dewey portrays him with no flaws. Sort of reminds me of the Northwest family. But so as he portrays him as this, um, Jamie's upset, and Stephen can see, it. and Stephen, being the amazing child he is, goes and fixes it up goes to Pearl and asks Pearl to go over the scripts and stuff. Pearl makes some changes and the play happens. And it was pretty darn good. So, yeah. Historical friction, despite not being a gem history like I wanted it to be, um, was really good. Like, almost best of the week. So thanks for watching the Steven Universe vlog of historical friction. Next arc is over. It was a bumpy road with one huge pot in the road. But in this final close of the Sardonyx arc, yes, I'm calling it an arc with the exception of of the historical friction. So, what did I think? But I think this was awesome! Okay, so, Friday's episode to close it out of Steam Bomb 3 was pretty much paired on as the main antagonist for the episode. And we get to see Sardonyx again. You know what? I That proves a theory I had that we'll see each of the, the fusions once as a major appearance and then one quick appearance. So, how did this episode go? Pretty good. We, um, so they were tracking Peridot, and now they can track her through warps. Um, and at the, so, basically, while they're there, Garnet and Pearl still have their blowout, which is a, a major complaint I've had with the arc. They've drawn this out a little too long, I, but I kind of understand it. So, I don't call it a flaw, but it's just a personal preference. Anyway, so as they go in, so they attempt to track down Peridot and fail because of Pearl and Garnet's antics. Um, so, and as time, and so, once they get back to the base, Peridot warps again and they track her again. 
Paradox actually proves that she is the Spock out of the three, and a very logical person, and hilarious. Um, yes, she's a very funny villain. Um, by, in her escape, she completely outwits the gems, which is something not may have been able to do because of the fight. And so after that, we spend the episode with Pearl and Garnet, um, learning to work together. Long story short, that conflict's done, and they confront Peridot. Now, Amethyst has little to do in this episode, and Steven is, definitely has a role, but isn't as big as Garnet and Pearl, I think. So, as we, so once we get there, it's just Peridot and the ship. And what they do is an epic battle. Steven actually is the leader in bringing her down. However, she cuts off her foot, pretty much, in the gem way, and goes. Also, this episode proves that Pearl's a species. Yes, it does. <laughs> Pearl said, I'm just a Pearl. So, coincidence? I think not. Um, so, yeah. And Peridot's now missing a foot. Yep. They're eventually going to catch her, I believe. So, yeah. So, tell me what you thought of this episode. Peridot, I think, could easily be defeated and reform and get her foot back, but I liked it. No, I didn't just like it. I hated it. I'm <laughs> just joking. I loved it. Thank you for watching my Steven Universe vlog of friendship. I have finally seen the full Steven Universe theme song in HD, and it is amazing. Like, best theme I've ever heard. Or close. But, so there's a recent theory that's been coming around. Peridot's defection. Now, Peridot is a villainous character, but she seems like she could be molded a bit. Okay. Here's my point. Peridot is a lot like a child, and we all know that by now in the series. Her whininess, stuff like that. Yeah. But, so in the full theme song, it sounds like her voice is singing it. It can sound like that voice, and I personally think it does sound like her voice, too. Because in the pre previously in the song, we hear Amethyst's voice. Amethyst, who's the only other possibility of it, because, to be totally honest, she kind of has a raspy-ish voice. That's why the song in Cry for Her Help, Maybe You're Better Off With Her, didn't hit me that much. Um, but, so, I just decided I'd throw out a quick video to see what people thought. Thank you, and come again. A poos, guys. Please subscribe if you like this video, and if you like me, Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Subscribe. Was up there. There are long sides. Sworn of the Sword and Jailbreak and Rose's Scabbard as a few of my favorite episodes of Steven Universe. Wanna know why? The suspense is real. The show knows that it could take a direction. And Personally, this is one of the most emotional Connie episodes I've seen, and it's my favorite of the Connie episodes, not including Sworn of the Sword. Honestly, Sworn of the Sword is my favorite episode. This is the perfect episode of the show. But aside from that, I love this episode. I haven't seen anything this good from that show since, since well, Sworn of the Sword. Because here's the thing, while well, Sword of the Sword, um, this episode is all about mothers. It's, it's the perfect Mother's Day episode, and it explains Connie's point stuff. Connie's mother is very controlling and wants a very normal schedule in her daughter's life. However, she has no clue what anything like the sword fighting, anything that's been going on in Beach City is like. She has no clue. This episode wakes her up into the to the situation at hand. While the townspeople were generally semi-aware, um, 
and and Connie and the Crystal Gems and Greg probably were aware. She is finally woken up to the semi aware that she knows that her daughter is at one of Earth's protectors. However, she's not going over too far with it like Pearl did. So basically, another strong point of this episode is the fusion experiments are back. That's right. I half expected um, the one of the patients to be Peridot. I really did. But it's kind of horrifying to see how how it's become with these fusions. They they're getting out further. Peridot has to be helping them get out and stuff more because because well that wasn't just her project but she's doing it anyway now how so yes i love nightmare hospital it's going to be one of the best episodes of one of the best shows ever made thank you for watching my video on steven universe vlogs nightmare hospital it was okay it wasn't that great but it wasn't bad um, the ending made up for anything bad in the first part. That's just my quick recommendation. I, uh, this one, I, I don't have much to talk about this one. It's not, it's not a personal favorite of mine. And it's not as bad as on your friend, but it's in the lower tiers of episodes. This was a grand episode. Steven Universe Back to the Barn. And it's probably one of the best episodes of the series. Yeah, I loved it. First of all, we learn a ton about Pearl, who is my favorite of the gems, just saying. Yeah. I'm with Lou Tunes on this one. Um, but but no, this episode was a fantastic. We got some great, great character development for Pearl. We find out that Pearl's more just like a slave or a servant. To the other gems, and Peridot was calling her out for it. The problem is, why didn't Peridot call her out before? And see, and this episode was great. It was a ton of um, gem robot battles between Peridot and Pearl. So yeah, see you never back to the barn. Good episode. So this is my Steven Universe Too Far review, and it was one of the g good episodes of the season so far. It It's around that same tier as Back to the Bar in my book. Like, it's good, but it's not great exactly. And here's the thing. Peridot's a great, great character, I think, already. And her redemption arc has been going good so far. We can all agree that, right? Right? Anyway, so let's get down to business here, boyish. So basically, well, um, this episode um has one of the funniest jokes in the whole show, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna just act it out. Sorry, but let's see. Uh, so Peridot says this to Garnet. You mind unfusing? It makes me feel uncomfortable. She's tied to a fence. <laughs> um, but, so after that happens, they have to get a drill bit and go to kindergarten. Once they go to kindergarten, it's revealed that Amethyst is overcooked, and she's the long, and she's the highest ranked gem there. What a shock. So, yeah, it was pretty good, this episode. And after that, they have a pretty good fight scene with Peridot and Amethyst in it. Um, Peridot almost kills Amethyst with a drill, then she saves him later, and Steven gets all dizzy. I really feel like this show could easily evolve into an ensemble show. And I want to do a future video on ensemble shows and what about them. But, so far, Too Far was a good episode. And, think, and yeah, after that, so, this is pretty much the Back to the Barn Amethyst edition. So yeah, bye. I had to do a video about it. There was no other way. However, 
what better way to do it than an actually um, edited video? I usually do the YouTube web editor, but for this two year anniversary, I've decided I am going to, well, tell my own personal history with the show. Now, nowadays, my channel seems like I've been a big fan the whole time, when I'm going to be totally honest here. It's a bit later to jump into the bandwagon than most people were. Yeah. I was not a big fan of the show when it originally came out. It was, in fact, a cartoon network show that I liked, but I didn't love. And this pattern consisted for, like, the first 10 to... 18 episodes. Yeah, it took me a while to get into it. Back in that day, I also was still a fan of Teen Titans Go, and, well, wasn't really someone who knew quality that well. Although I did know Breadwinner's crew was crap. I mean... <laughs> now as it comes down to it, it's time to finally discuss it. What got me into the show? What got me into Steven Universe, my biggest show on my channel? Well, this is what will I'll explain will happen. You see, I started watching the show when it first came out. I really did. I watched almost all the Cartoon Network shows then. And here's the thing. I did like it. And I still do like it. Except, why was I not a big fan of it compared to now? Was it not... Um, not, was it I didn't understand it? I always thought of it as a good show that needed a little something to push it over the edge. And here's the story of what did. My favorite episode of season one for a while, or season one point five, no, season one, um, was Coach Steven. Like, or Steve, season one original, not even, not counting Jailbreak. And I was, I loved G Coach Steven, and it got me hooked on the show, because if you manage to have good music, you manage to hook me. And that says something about how my channel goes, I mean, it kind of helps. I've never been a, that big of a fan of the show, and I'm surprised. So, after Coach Steven brought me in, it took Warp Tour to give it the amazing edge. Warp Tour showed me truly the story arcs in it. I don't know what happened first, on the run or Warp. No, it was Warp Tour. And yeah, Warp Tour brought me into the fandom, and yeah, that's when it became my favorite Cartoon Network show. Now it still had a huge rival than Gravity Falls, and now it does, and I'll explain that part later on. But it's kind of interesting. So after its rivalry with Gravity Falls started for me, I waited a little while until the first Steven Bomb. Monday was probably one of the best of that bomb was probably one of the best days in animation history for me. Rose's Scabbard and Nobody Seems came out, which is big. Now of course this was the time when I was past Korra age, where Korra had officially ended. And I was officially allowed to let my mind blossom about this kind of stuff. Now from the core days, we go through the Steven Bomb, which was for, which I watched consistently because I really liked the show. Yet, one of my biggest mistakes I regret on YouTube is not doing reviews of the Steven Bomb episodes. Because if I had, I probably would be on the maps. Yeah, I really, I really messed up there. As time goes on, I started to develop even more respect for the show, with, with finally starting to rival Gravity Falls during the off-season and defeating it for a while. And for a while past that point, I was a bit major fan of the show too. The show helped keep me going during some times in, in my 7th grade school year, which weren't always the best. But my optimism stuck through it, trust me. I might go in depth on that later, but...
This show helped me a lot. And now we get to mo now now a time. Sworn to Three Swords happened and I adored it. Um, now the show is consistently my favorite show on t on TV with rivals from Star Wars Rebels and Gravity Falls and the Goldbergs, which I will get to. Um, but yeah, that's its history. I just want to say thank you, Rebecca Sugar. You've helped me a lot on this time. And I respect you. You're an amazing creator, and I'm very anxious to see what's to come. So thank you guys for watching this video. I just thought I needed to get these thoughts out. Entertainment Lord, out.